Hi, this is Dr. Schaefer. The following video will demonstrate my philosophy and technique to obtain an excellent and predictable profile during rhinoplasty. The technique I use is an endoscopic technique with a closed rhinoplasty. I also use the endoscopes to correct a deviated nasal septum to improve the patient's nasal breathing. I use the endoscope to better visualize the nasal bones and cartilage along the bridge of the nose. This aids me to reduce the profile and obtain the best contour and angle. This patient requests improvement in her breathing and nasal deformity. Preoperative evaluation shows her nasal obstruction is due to her deviated nasal septum. The lateral view shows a bump or hump on the nose, which is due mostly to cartilage rather than bone. She's a hanging columella, also with a droopy tip. The frontal view shows a crooked nose, dependent tip, and asymmetry of her lower lateral cartilage domes. The alars are at different heights. In open rhinoplasty, an incision is placed under the nasal tip across the columella. In my opinion, this goes against all the principles of plastic surgery. As plastic surgeons, we are supposed to reduce incisions and hide them. Using a closed endoscopic technique, I'm not limited in my ability to place grafts. I see all the structures adequately without this incision. Open rhinoplasty not only delays healing, but adds time to the procedure. Open rhinoplasty distorts the natural soft tissue triangles located below and lateral to the domes, making a telltale sign of a surgical nose. Either way, each surgeon has to feel comfortable with their approach to get the desired results. I feel my technique yields the most natural, unoperated look. The endoscopic rhinoplasty uses a zero-degree endoscope attached to an HD camera system. A gabella or outfricked elevator is held in place by an assistant. This is done after initial hump reduction is performed with angled scissors and rasps. This technique is for fine adjustments required I couldn't obtain consistently with a headlight. The upper lateral and dorsal cartilage and bones are trimmed endoscopically. The small piece of bone and cartilage are typically missed. One of the more common complaints after undergoing rhinoplasty are irregularities with the nasal profile. Either too much or too little was removed, but even more commonly, small little spicules of bone or cartilage may show through the skin, which appear weeks or months after surgery. I believe this endoscopic technique I employ allows me for better visualization and a reduction of these problems. Here we can see with the angled scissors, small little pieces of upper lateral cartilage are trimmed that normally I wouldn't see. An endoscopic septoplasty is now being performed to correct a deviated nasal septum and improve nasal breathing. Crooked cartilage and bone is removed after mucosal lining flaps are raised. This cartilage is removed and preserved for either reconstruction or placed back between the septal flaps for stability of the septum. The posterior bone, called the vomer, is very heavy and is removed with cut through gents and Middleton forceps. This allows no twisting of the septum. At the completion of the septoplasty, the septum is more midline, the airways open. We do not pack for any of our cases. Pre and post operative pictures will show that the patient, at, even at one week after surgery, has an excellent profile. The Tip is elevated and in good position. There are many controversies in facial plastic surgery, but there is one thing most plastic surgeons have agreed upon. Rhinoplasty is the most challenging and demanding procedure we have. I have over 20 years experience in rhinoplasty and nearly 20 years of endoscopic experience. My practice has a significant amount of patients who require revision surgery and have had their primary surgery performed elsewhere. The endoscopic rhinoplasty has helped me achieve these reproducible excellent results. Our office has joint commission accreditation which allows us to safely operate on our patients in a clean, comfortable, and very safe environment. The office suite is used for those patients who are self-pay for cosmetic surgery. For those patients who have functional and cosmetic surgery performed simultaneously, we offer North Shore and LIJ 